So I want to talk about something about how to make money with your tractor. Now we've we've been down this journey for. Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tony, and Tanya's behind the camera. We're riding down the road, and we've got a job. And I've got a lot of comments in the past about how to make money with a tractor. So we're going to talk about this specific job and how we run our business. Now we're going to show you uh, us going out and grinding the stump off with the bomb light stump grinder and the TYM 474. This is our this is our money maker, and I want you to stay through the whole video because I'm going to put nuggets of information throughout the video when it's pertinent in during the video talking about you know how to make money. What, what are what are what are the, what are the big mistakes people make that buy tractors and goes goes out and uh, you know trying to make a little extra money? In reality, they're losing money because they don't know how to run a business. So you got to stay with us through this whole video. It's going to be some great stump grinding footage in here, and also. We're going to give you some nuggets on how to make some money. We got a late night evening. <clears throat> we have got a job and we got to go grind some stumps tomorrow. We're going to make a little money. And so what we got to do is get the tractor down from the cabin and go get the big stump grinder, put it on the back of the tractor, put the grapple in the front of the tractor and load it all up onto the gooseneck, hook the gooseneck up to the truck and get everything ready and then go back to the house and then we'll leave from the house first thing in the morning. Go make us some money. All right, there's the tractor. Gonna get a few things out of the barn. We're gonna need to get a chainsaw, put the chainsaw in the chainsaw holder. Cause we're gonna be to need a big chainsaw to cut a stump off even with the ground tomorrow. So we don't have to do a whole lot of extra stump grinding. Big giant cedar. I didn't put anything on and the mosquitoes are wearing me out. I mean, they're just chewing on me. Okay, we got everything greased up. The loader's greased up, but also we really, Went after the stump grinder, grease fittings, uh, all the key, all the key joints have grease fittings here, here on all the cylinders. There's grease fittings, so we went through and hit all of the grease fittings. So I'm pretty happy about that, and checked all the teeth, make sure nothing's loose. I think we're ready to rip some stuff up tomorrow. Now we just need to load the chainsaw, and make sure we have stuff for the chainsaw tomorrow. And I think we're good to go. I got a question the other day about putting my saw on the tractor and driving it down the road with a trailer. And having my saw on the saw boss, it, do I have any problems with it coming loose? And the action, <laughs> question is no. Once you put it in that dude, I'm not seeing any indication, no matter how big of the bump, that that saw is going to come out of that saw boss. It, I think it does a great job, and it's super well protected. So other than theft, that'd be your only problem if you pulled in somewhere and somebody decided to jump over and take it off. They could do that, but it's going to be with me tomorrow, so I'm not worried about it. Tractor's on the trailer. Trailer's down. Got to lock it down. There's two locks right here. And I have done this where I run off and left these unlocked. So it's very important. Damn, see, I didn't even need it right that time. I'm trying to hold a camera. Can't do it. All right, that's what it looks like correctly. Can do the other side. I get a lot of people asking where I got my trailer from, and I got it from tpdtrailersales.com, and it's just north of Murray, Kentucky. And they've been really good to me. Uh, never really had an issue with the trailer. But uh, on another project, they, I had a little issue. They took care of it. And so they've always treated me right. And they sell trailers all over the United States. These, these, these guys are massive trailer dealers. And they generally have the best deal around. I don't get anything for saying this. We are not sponsored. Hadn't talked to the guys in actually probably a year or so. So, you know, but you can give them a call if you're interested in a really good value trailer. All right, I'm going to see if I can make this magic trick work where I chain the tractor up. Oh, would you look at that? It still works. I got two chains, one on the front, one on the back, and one on going across the implement. Just, and some people actually put one on their loader. I don't actually do that. Not for short trips anyway. All right, I know somebody's going to say it. I should put my binders on the other side. I like to be able to look in my mirror and see my binders and how they're reacting. 
and see if they're loose. And if they're bouncing up and down, I'll pull over in a safe place and tighten them up. So that's just how I do it. All right, it's my favorite time of day, crack of dawn. Crows are making noise in the background. Got everything loaded up at the house. And we're getting ready to pull out here in just a few minutes. So I want to talk about something about how to make money with your trasher. Now we've we've been down this journey for a long time. The reason we got a little trasher was when I retired out of the military, I thought I could make a little extra money. And you can. You can actually, if you're willing to hustle, you can make some money with a little tractor. And uh, but I, over the over the years, we've learned that it's better to have specialty tools. So what I'm saying is, is everybody has a box blade or a grader blade or a bush hog or a rotary cutter of some sort, right? So everybody has that. So you're competing with those people and. A lot of them don't understand how to make money. They don't understand that you have to take into account how much your fuel costs driving. And they don't take you know take into account the wear and tear of your of your tractor and fuel for your tractor. They just go out and put the tractor on the trailer and they feel like they've made some money if they go home with 50 bucks in their pocket. Well, the reality of it is that's not how you make money. You're actually losing money when you go out the door and you say you, you somebody pays you $50 to grade their driveway. You got to take into account all the wear and tear, like I'm going down this road right now, wear and tear, tires, things that are going to break. And you have to add that in. So each time you pull your tractor out, you need to know how many, how many hours uh, you're going to be going and what it costs really to run your tractor. And this is why I'm talking about when you compete against people that have like a little small tractor with box plates and rotary cutters, they don't think these things through and they undercut you. So you're never gonna, you know, first off, even if they do undercut you, don't move your tractor until you have a customer that's willing to pay you uh, where you're being profitable. Because those guys are only gonna do it for so long and eventually they're gonna figure out they're losing money because they wore the tractor out and they need tires for the tractor, but they don't have any money put back for it because they just charge a, a, a really cheap flat rate to get some money in their pocket real quick and trust me times are tough and I understand that however what I'm gonna advocate is for you to buy specialty things now that we have on the back of our tractor right now we have a bomb light articulating uh, articulating stump grinder well not everybody has that and it's a big cost up front however because it's a big cost that means your average person is not going out and doing it I'm saying before you try to do rotary cutting and box blading and all those kind of those kind of jobs, get get a, a stump grinder, and I will not move my trailer and tractor for less than 500 bucks because that's you know it's about 500 bucks, 250 to 500 dollars just for anybody to bring out a stump grinder to grind one stump. So just keep that in mind. Uh, there is ways to make more money, and you'll you'll end up being way more profitable because you know the stump grinding is there's not a lot of people with stump grinders out there so you're not competing with those people that are uh are winging it and just you know undercutting you because they don't think that far ahead that's what i'm saying is don't don't go for the rotary cutter right here on the side of the road there's a rotary cutter for sale right there you know you see these things laid all over the place so people will buy a tractor and they're going hey i'm going to make me a little money and you can you can make money and you will get customers if you are if you go mow their, their pastors you will get those customers that trust you and they know when you say you're going to be there you're going to be there but that's going to cost them a little bit more because the people that are not doing that and not running they're running it like a business they are uh they're basically running their equipment in the ground and they can't be consistent because they're constantly running out of money and they're breaking down and they don't have any kind of reserves built up because they're just doing it for hey I, I can get 50 bucks a day just by mowing this pasture they don't think about anything else anyway so back to the video
Along the way, I realized that the top link that I had didn't, it won't work with this stump grinder. It just will not extend far enough back. And I've been meaning to get an extended top link and that's what I did. I stopped along the way at the farm store, grabbed an extended top link. I think it was like 39 bucks for that extra long top link. And um, got it uh, there, but I had to figure out a way to, to set it up. So I, you know, you see me here figuring, just figuring it out. Cause I have to get the pressure off of the top of that top link so I can get the pins out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and cut this dude off even so we don't have to have as much uh, time grinding. It's it's a red cedar, so, or juniper, whatever you wanna call it. But it shouldn't, as long as there's no metal in this, that'd be the bad day for some metal in it, which could be, it happens. All right, the reason I didn't cut it down lower is because there's already been a bunch of people cutting with the chainsaws and sometimes get your chain in a bind and they'll try to go down another path. If I'm gonna play with this, I think it's gonna be pretty soft because it's red cedar and uh, I think we'll just go right through it. But if it's gonna be more difficult, I'll stop and go ahead and cut it off one more layer. I've got about eight inches extra than I would like to have, but I didn't wanna get into those other tracks because throw, throw a chain inside that sun gun and then it's a bad day for you. So this is probably not the safest way of doing this, but I, I like to take my guard and put it up and it throws the chips way away and doesn't clog this area up so you can actually see what you're doing afterwards.
feel for it again. I bumped it with my butt. I butt bumped it. Okay, so we, you see there, I'm taking probably about a three, four inch cut in the center. I need to come forward just a little bit. And uh, I've been using the small tractor for this. Uh, because the stump was so big, I thought I wouldn't put it on the big tractor. So the, I'm using the rear controls on the big tractor, which are a little different. But hey, I think it's doing pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and pull forward just a little bit. So I get the front of the stump, and then we'll work our way back. talk about how you uh, how you budget money for your for your business your tractor business you need to know all right an oil change costs this much for my tractor so you know you're gonna have to change fill filter the oil filter the air filter you know there's, there's intervals and you know that's gonna happen and you know how much that costs so that's pretty much known cost so you, you know how much it costs to operate your truck per mile we, we have a Ram 2500 diesel uh, so I know that you know, every 10,000 miles, I've got to change the oil in my truck, and I know exactly it's going to cost me about 200 bucks to do that. If I run synthetic oil. Um, you know, you need to know how much it's going to cost to run your trailer. You need to average out, okay, uh, I got new tires on my trailer, I got bearings on my trailer, uh, grease, I got to grease my bearings every so often. How much does it cost per mile? I know it seems kind of minuscule, but you need to know these things so you can add all this cost in there and then you need to add about 15 percent of that in a reserve fund so that you have some money put back when say what happens when your transmission goes out of warranty or it goes out and you don't you don't have a warranty or what happens if a bearing goes down on your trailer you're going to need that money what happens if i have a blowout you run across them just because you got brand new tires don't mean they're going to last you for for 20,000 miles you you run over a piece of steel in the road well guess what that tire's gone so you need to have some reserve built up. So whatever it costs to operate your vehicle, add 15% to that. Some people add 20% to that and tack on to that. So if you're gonna go, you gotta drive your truck, uh, say 30 miles. Well, you need to add 30 miles worth of cost to whatever the job is. And then you need to know how much it costs to run your tractor. How, how often do you need to change the oils in your tractor? filters you know you got known cost how much diesel it costs to run per hour you can get a after you do it for a little while you'll get an understanding of how how many gallons per hour your tractor runs doing specific jobs so you need to know these things and then you're going to add all that up and i know it seems daunting at first but it's going to come second nature to you and you'll get you a baseline 
and then you'll add your 15 to 20 percent more of whatever that cost is and that covers you after you do job after job after job you'll build up a nice little reserve especially if you're starting out with new equipment but you can't assume your new equipment is not going to have a blowout you can't assume you, you need that reserve built up because your tractor will wear out it will need to be serviced it will something will break so you need that reserve then you need to charge for the job so whatever the job cost is plus the equipment your truck and your trailer and then whatever it costs to do to run your tractor per hour and you're gonna have to figure that out and that's the only way you're gonna be profitable there's things that you gotta you gotta think about too some people will run a little dirty and they won't they won't have they'll have the, like their tractors on their homeowners insurance when you pull away from your home and say you uh, or out on a job and your tractor burns up, well, guess what? Your tractor is not covered. So you want to have insurance. Uh, when I bought my uh, tractors, we, we got insurance with them. Uh, and uh, it's like a, a seven year plan that we just paid for up front. And, you know, once this, this tractor is four years old, and once that seven year plan's up, we're going to go to, you know, we're going to have to add that on to our, our business insurance. And it's two, these things are, you know, a, a new tractor like the 474 back there. I don't know what the price of it is now, but I'm guessing, you know, $40,000, $50,000 with a backhoe and all the equipment that goes with it. You you can't just like wing that. You need to have it insurance because, you know, one mistake, you know, tractor catches on fire, burns up, that's catastrophic and could cost you um, a, a, a ton of money. Well, what if you've got that tractor financed? Well, guess what? You're still paying for that tractor you don't have. So you need to have that insurance on your tractor, you need to have the insurance on your trailer, your truck, all that kind of stuff. And that's your cost. You need to figure those costs into your jobs. So we don't do this full time, but whenever I do go out and do a job, I, I have that in the back of my mind. I know exactly how much uh, it costs me to run my truck, my tractor, my trailer, and my equipment. And this, for example, what about your implements? So the stump grinder has carbide teeth and they last a long time. However, they don't last forever. So you need to know if you're stump grinding that, you know, add an extra $10 per job to put back for teeth for your stump grinder. Uh, every implement, you need, to, you need to think about it. So everything that you touch, it's got wear, that has wear and tear. You need to, uh, make sure that you're putting money back for that if you're using it for for money or to make money now a lot of our equipment we used to own our farm for us personally and then it's just again because we can go out and do these kind of jobs we can make a pretty good bit of money on the side just part-time because not everybody needs to stump ground down, down every day we've got a trencher so that trencher is very unusual but not everybody needs a trench dug every day but we can uh, we're going to use that trencher on our farm building our homestead so it makes good sense for us and then we can make a little extra money when somebody says hey uh, I know you got a trencher can you trench this, this trench well, yeah but I'm not leaving the house for less than 500 bucks but I can get there and I promise you I'll be there on time and sometimes it's worth their it's worth that extra money than to say you know they go to a normal general contractor and they say uh, I can't get to it for three four weeks when I can say hey uh, you need that done tomorrow. Listen, I can do it, but it's going to cost you 500 bucks. So that's kind of the, you know, that's kind of the clientele you want to work. You're not working yourself to death. You're not working your equipment to death. But when you are working, you're making good money. So, and it pays for cruises and vacations and stuff like that. And chickens. And, and chickens. And more chickens. Don't even go there. All right. So we'll be back to you in just a minute.
All right, your last little tidbit of information on how to make a profitable tractor business is clean up your work afterwards. Go above and beyond their expectation. If you do that, when they come back or when the work needs to be done again, they'll invite you back. And if you don't meet those expectations, they promise you they won't invite you back. And that's how you get the little extra premium pay is by going that extra mile. All right, there you go. The stump is gone. It's probably about eight inches, maybe nine inches below the surface. Back dragged it, filled it up. There's a modular comb home coming in here in like the next couple of days. That's the reason they had to have it now. They couldn't get anybody any sooner. And that's why we could offer a premium service. So, hey, again, appreciate you watching the channel. God bless.